Okay, when I was 12 years old, my father bought me an Atari 800 computer. Now, being a kid, I wanted, for what I wanted to learn how to do was write video games, right? So now Atari 800 has a 6502 microprocessor. So this book was like my Bible for the next four or five years. I mean, if you found me, you found this book. I would be reading this book at 3 o'clock in the morning sometimes. Now, I did go on to publish a video game, actually, in 1982. Yeah, I'm an old programmer. Uh, in a magazine called Analog Computing. And it's actually available on YouTube, believe it or not. Now, my world was these little three-letter mnemonics, right? I became so immersed in this world that they, these things came like tattoos on my brain. They were like brain tattoos. You know, and what I actually realized, this was like compressed information. Like LDA was all this, the characters, COC expanded all these characters, and this like brain tattoo of INX actually expands to 27 characters. Now, I no longer program in a seeming language, but I wanted to, you know, how could I take advantage of this phenomenon of these brain tattoos? And that's when I came up with the idea of algorithm mnemonics. What if the C and I, it could expand to this? Or what about, I just think F and I, and all of a sudden this all appears, right? <laughs> what about RPI, and this, this all appears? And it works for idioms too, like the erase remove idiom. ERM expands to all this. And you're saying, well, this really sounds cool, Tom, but how would that actually work? Well, let's go to the video. <laughs> okay, now what I'm doing, I'm typing the container, and then I type the mnemonic. I'm filling a, con a container with negative 5 to 5. Now, I just type the container and mnemonic. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm counting positive integers, as you can see. I container, mnemonic, it's actually going faster than me. <laughs> and I, okay, and I was STO. Do you see STO? That was kind of a free one. Oh, look, and there's a, a random advertisement for the control left bracket optimization. <laughs> I don't know how that got in there. Okay, again, here comes your, your container, mnemonic, and I fill in by I'm tabbing between those things. I'm replacing all positive numbers with 42, of course. And now I'm going to output the container with the OIT mnemonic. And here we're going to use the erase remove idiom. I'm getting rid of that 42. And notice it's faster to do the mnemonic than actually cut and paste that output reiterator from above, right? So now, if you remember, I told you about the 6502 instruction set. Well, what I did, I came up with the STL instruction set. I created a mnemonic <laughs> for every algorithm. Now, if you, and you can do the same thing. <clears throat> and you'll be zipping through the algorithms in no time. You'll, it'll be like your arsenal. Just we would call them at will. Okay, so now how do you get it? You can go to my uh, GitHub account, and I got an XML file that has every mnemonic and the suggested code text that should be expanded. Now, I did implement it also for Slick Edit and BIM if you have those editors. So, but anybody should be able to take the XML and, and implement it for any uh, editor. Oh, wait, there's a bonus. I will now to reveal to you the BIM secret. Well, I call the BIM conspiracy. Now, if you do what I tell you to do, you will increase your BIM performance by 10x. Now, what's the most useless key on the keyboard? Well, it's the caps lock key. You want to turn that thing off. I suggest you go get a crowbar and just pluck that thing off because it's useless. No caps lock. Now, if you remember back in the day, Sun Microsystems, they put the control key in the right place. That's where it's supposed to be. I mean, that's the hot zone, man. Now, unfortunately, Sun goes out of business and it doesn't catch on, right? So what you can you do? Today, you can remap all operating systems support this. You can remap your control key uh, to your caps lock. There's also a control cap for Windows. Now, once you get this, then you hit pay dirt. You get control left bracket. No more escape. And the control left bracket actually is already built into VM. Now, no more escape. I mean, escape is like, it's like we're in Seattle and escape is over there in Timbuktu. <laughs> No offense if you're from Timbuktu. That's just a common expression we use in the United States. Okay? Now, let's go to the keyboard and do some analysis. Now, the home row is like the L1 cache, okay? And the next row is like the L2 cache. Now, the keyboard doesn't have a very large processor, so it's only got L1 and L2. It doesn't have an L3 cache. Now, now the, the next row is like main memory. And guess what all those things up there are? Yeah, you guess it. They're peripheral devices, right? So, and what's the escape key? Oh, it's the NIC card. Every time you're hitting that escape, it's like you're going to the, the internet, right? And what, do you, what does everybody do in BI? They fat finger that escape. It's like you're losing packets, right? And you're going in there and pinging and trying to retry. And you're trying to reset the network, you know? And then what happens? You get data corruption in your editor, right? 
when I wear the Kentucky. Man, it's right there in the hot zone, right on the L1 cache, right? I mean, and this is like an embedded system because all these keys, they stay in there. You get 100% cache hit rate, okay? Now, where's the, the, where's the left bracket? Oh, it's an L2 cache, right? It's the same thing. You get a 100% cache hit rate with uh, both of those. Now, I know you guys are saying, well, Tom, these, these performance gains you're telling us, where's your benchmarks, right? Where's the perf data? <laughs> well, you know, optimization that we always heard, optimization without measurement is useless. You know, you cannot guess at optimization, right? Well, unfortunately, I didn't have time to do any kind of analysis, but I did able to come out like a unit test with, you know, using the air, the test harness, and <laughs> basically what I can see, if you see, I, this is the control left bracket optimization, okay? <laughs> now the skate, you can clearly see that's got to be at least a 10x move, right? We're test 10x slower, it's got to be. That's all I can really offer. So now, I highly suggest you try out the control, I mean, this is a game changer, it really is, and it's already, it's free. It's already in BI. I don't know how it got in there. There's no documentation about it. I just, I actually just happened to hit it one day. <laughs> I said, hey, man, this is great. And I said, I got to tell other people about this. You know? So now, also, if you've tried BI in the past and you just couldn't, you know, you, got, you couldn't stand that escape stuff, you, you, you should try BI again. I used to be an Emacs and user for a long time and other editors, and I finally switched to BI, but, but when I discovered this control F bracket, I mean, it really, I mean, my productivity went, you know, just through the roof. I mean, I, I won't go back here again. I'm like all day long, and actually, I no longer notice even I'm going in a different mode. Because really, see, you're just going like this, you know? <laughs> With a control left bracket, but you're not doing, you know, playing whack the mole all day. <laughs> you know? It's just like that. So, thank you. My name is uh, Tommy Bennett. Here's my uh, contact information. So now go forth and be nimble with algorithm mnemonics. Thank you.